All right. Good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser of Maker's Leather Supply. And uh, this morning, uh, we're going to work on this belt right here. And what we're going to do is we are going to buck stitch this belt. Um, wanted to do some buck stitching not long ago and found out that there really weren't, I guess the word would be, wasn't any um, high quality buck stitching uh, chisels being made. Um, some of the ones sold by the larger chain stores and stuff, they just, uh, they, they don't cut it. They're not very sharp. They're not well made. And that's just not the game that Maker's Leather Supply plays. So, um, anyway, long story short, that means I have my guy make some. So here we have our set of buck stitching chisels. Uh, it's a brand new item that are going to be on the website here in a little bit today. Um, I've played with them a little bit, but I wanted to make this belt so that I'd have a nice picture for the website of, hey, this is what you can do with these. Um, I've been posting some progress pics of the, the belt on uh, my Facebook and Instagram, and everybody was wondering, you know, about the belt itself uh, and said, well, you should make a video on, you know, everything you've done so far. So I'm just going to do a super brief overview, overview because anybody watching this is watching about the buck stitching, not about the... Uh, the, 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 the making of a belt. Um, it's a Don Gonzalez pattern that we actually do a pattern rib for. This is his belt number three pattern that we sell. Um, tooled it up. I added a beaded border, um, which, you know, it's the double line border instead of just the single line that it did have. Um, and uh, I left a nice wide border on the edges of it before the buck stitching. As far as finishing, this is Angelus uh, dark brown on the sides and then also in the in the background of the, the floral there. And then um, I sealed it all off with uh, Angelus acrylic sealer number 600. Um, people were asking how I do it. I, I put on a dab on, sorry, I painted the turquoise after I died. Then I sealed it, okay? And when I seal it, I dab the first portion on. You don't want to rub it hard because that paint's still going to be, um, um, you can mess with it. Uh, so anyway, if you're rubbing it, you can, you can knock it off the corners and stuff. So dab the first coat on, wait about 15 minutes. The second coat, I just wipe it on real quick, waited about 12 hours. Um, this morning I came into the shop and I used Angelus Acrylic Antique Dark Brown. And that is what gets into all the little cracks in the crevices and, you know, highlights your tooling and stuff like that. I really do like the, the Angelus um, antiques. I didn't think that I would because I came over from Phoebe's antique paste like most people do. And um, it's not quite as easy to use because it is, it is a water-based product and, and you've got to be a little bit more careful with um, wiping it on, wiping it off type stuff. But honestly, I feel like I get better results out of it. Where it stays, it's darker. Where it wipes off, it's cleaner. It doesn't darken your tooling. You know, a lot of the antique paste will darken the entire tooling. And I mean, I wanted this to be that nice, light, natural leather color. If I wanted it darker than that, then I would have just dyed it russet. So that's what I like about the antique paste. Now, on to the reason you're watching this video. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a, uh, I have here a pair of wing dividers, and I'm going to take them and I'm going to set them up to where they basically just kind of split that wide border I have in half, and I'm going to draw a line all the way around the belt. And then I'm going to uh, use the buck stitch chisels all the way down and around the belt. Um, like most of my videos, I'm not going to bore you with the long part of it all. Uh, I'll, I'll knock in a couple of these buck stitch uh, chisels and let you see. Let me turn the camera. You're not looking at me. It's time to see the belt. Stuff out of the way so it'll focus right. All right. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll knock in a couple so you can see how nice and easy it is to use these nice sharp chisels we had made. And um, they are... The spacing on them, they are four millimeter, um, the prongs are four millimeters wide, and then there's four millimeters of space in between them so that they're nice and even all the way around the belt. Only thing that stinks when you have a table that's never cleaned off is when you're doing a long belt. Um, my belt is glue or my liner is glued to the back of my belt and I did not cut it off yet. 
Um, I'll do that after I buck stitch the belt together. Um, I could cut it off now, but eh, didn't do it. And the cutting table's a whole 10 feet that way, and I just don't want to do it right now. Um, when I was designing uh, these buck stitch chisels, I got a hold of a couple of friends of mine that do a lot more buck stitching than I ever did. And I kind of talked to them about spacings and measurements and how they do it and everything. And um, one of my friends actually told me, he said, look, he said, traditional buck stitching, the, the chisels are straight. They're not slanted like most people think. You know, these ones that are slanted and then the, the stitch just goes in and out. That's more of a, a whip stitch style. And um, he basically told me that we couldn't be friends anymore if I designed them with slanted uh, prongs on them. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm not letting that influence me too much because we will have some at some point that are slanted so that people can lace with them. Because there's also not a good set of lacing chisels out there that's high quality. Anyway. All right. So here we are. I am going to use, this is an 18 ounce maul. Um, there's no reason to use a heavier one because these things are pretty dang sharp. And I'm just gonna go along and I'm gonna put the uh, the prongs right there in that track that I, that I just created and give it a whack. Um, a lot of people talk about how much they just hate buck stitching. And what I think it is, is they hate doing the holes for buck stitching because again, Nobody was making a good tool for it. So anyway, all right. So yeah, I'm going to go down here and basically every time I move the, the tool down, I'm going to put the last prong in the last hole that was made, you know, the last time I hit it. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go all the way down the belt doing this. And I'm going to make sure that my prongs are straight up and down. And um then I'll turn the camera back on and we will uh, we'll begin to buck stitch. All right, got all my holes punched all the way around. Get to focus on that. There we go. Um, got all my uh, holes punched all the way around. And one thing I forgot to talk about is your punching surface. If um, if you don't have a, a rubber board or like this one is a PVC based, um, this is actually a product we sell in the store, but we are not able to ship it yet because I need to find bigger flat boxes. I, I always struggle with shipping anytime we uh, we put out a new product. Um, let me turn on this off this air conditioner in case it's making too much noise. Um, so anyway. Uh, I, I don't have a way to ship it yet, but I do have these available in the store. Um, it's a 12 inch by 12 inch. This one's a little bit bigger because it was the end of the roll. Um, and it, what it is, it's, it's a conveyor belting material. It's, it's, it's PVC based. So technically this is a, a flexible plastic, not a rubber, but that also helps the tools. Um, rubber will hold your tools really, uh, when you pound them into it, they're hard to pull back out. Anyway, all that to say, you need a softer surface under your leather than a plastic cutting board, okay? One of those like white plastic kitchen cutting boards that most of us use in our shops are going to um, not be good for these punches and the punches definitely aren't gonna be good for the cutting board. Um, if you don't have access to a rubber board or something like this or whatever, I mean, even, a, you know, take some uh, strips of leather and glue them together so you've got a nice thick pad or something to run under your belt as you, as you go down it. So, uh, yeah, so I did want to mention that. Um, I've seen a lot of people ruin good chisels, um, not using them with the correct uh, punching surface. So um, the belt is, is, is punched. I have here a, uh, a roll of white one eighth of an inch buck stitch lace that I got from the wonderful Barb at Why Not Lace. Um, I'm hoping to carry this at some point, but right now I do not. So. Uh, Barb at Why Not Lace, the letter Y, and then K-N-O-T, lace.com. Um, Barb is an amazing woman, and I am all about sending her some business. Uh, for our Canadian customers, there's a Canadian woman, Linda Brown, who goes under the name of Naughty Linda. Um, 
she uh, she is uh, up in Canada and sells a, also a very superior lace product, um, also kangaroo and everything. And she's also a wonderful person, but unfortunately, she is all the way up in Canada, so it's a lot easier for me to get it from Barb at uh, Why Not Lace. Um, so there you go. So I have that. I've got a two prong lacing um, needle here. Uh, it's gonna be. I'll never get that thing to focus. Maybe. So anyway, it's a two prong lacing needle. It's called that because it has two little prongs that splits open on the end here. And it's got two little prongs in there that hold almost like tiny little fish teeth that hold the lace. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut me off a nice long piece of lace. I really don't wanna have to splice this if I don't have to. Um, I don't know, that, that may be the wrong answer, we'll see. But I, I don't wanna splice it because I just don't. So. Um, I'm going to cut off a really long piece of this lace and I'm going to show you how to put it into the needle and then we're going to pause the video because i got to move everything over to Charlie the Stitching Horse. I, I honestly don't have enough buck stitching experience to even tell you how long I need to cut this. So I'm going to cut it two times the length of the belt plus a little bit more because I, again I'd rather have a little bit left over than worry about uh, having to splice it. But we'll see. Sometimes after you go through all those holes that white lace won't look so white anymore and if that's the case then I will splice it and uh, get a clean piece again. <clears throat> okay so how I do this if the lace is really thick, which this is not, this is the perfect, perfect um, uh, thickness. It's very thin. Um, if the lace is really thick, then I'll go ahead and just kind of skive down just the end of it with my, uh, my scalpel. And then I'm going to put it in. And what I do is, you know, just like any other leather, this, uh, this lace, this is kangaroo, by the way, has uh, a grain side and a flesh side. The grain side's that smooth side, the finished side. And I use that, the, the grain side, up against those little prongs. So I split this open with my fingernail, push my lace in there. I'm shaking like crazy this morning. All right, and I kind of center it up. And then I'll use a mallet or a pair of pliers or something to, to squeeze that down onto that. So, like, I'll take my mallet here. And my head of it's already scratched up and everything from everything else I use it for. And I'll just punch it down there. Now, if I have sharp corners where the lace sticks out on the sides of the needle, I'll take my scalpel and I'll, 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 I'll just trim those off just a little bit because that's resistance as you're going through. I'll say I'll take my scalpel. Who knows where my scalpel is? Here's one. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to take and, uh, and trim off just that tiny little corner right there. And that's it right there. I mean, trimmed off just the tiniest bit, but that's going to make the world of difference going through this project. Um, all right, so I'm going to pause the video again. I'm going to have to turn the camera and everything. Uh, Charlie the Stitching Horse is sitting right over there just waiting on some love. And, um, yeah, and then we'll unpause the video and we'll be over there. All right, so now we're focused on Charlie here. Uh, it's going to take me a second to get all arranged on here and everything. Uh, this stitching horse was made using the, uh, the Al Stolman um, plans that are in one of his books. I, I'm sorry, I don't remember which book it is. I think it might have been the Encyclopedia Saddle Making. Um, but anyway, it's, it's an awesome stitching horse. The, the jaws on it, actually, I can swivel them and turn them uh, all the way around uh, so that they're angled however uh, I might need them to reach hard to reach places. Okay, so to start my buck stitch, I am going to start on the back side, and then I'm also I'm starting on the fold over, the buckle fold over, okay, on the end of the belt. Uh, the reason I'm starting here is because once that's folded over and everything, we'll never see the seam where uh, where this was was begun. Okay, um, I'm starting from the back side, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it to where the finished side of the lace, the, the grain side is facing me, and then the flesh side is facing um, forward there on the end of this belt. And I'm going to pull it through the belt, and then I'm going to turn the needle around, and I'm gonna go right back through the very next hole. 
So what happened here is this lace did a 180 degree turn. All right, let me pull that through. Um, it did a 180 degree turn, and what you're left with is going to be that um, that twist that uh, you know traditional buck stitching has. All right, so I'm going to start. I'm going to do a couple of these here, and then I'm going to pull them tight. But uh, I if, uh, hang on just a second. Um, I'm going to do a couple of these and then I'm going to pull them tight and, uh, you know, zoom in on it a little bit and that way we can see what's going on. And then I'm going to continue all the way around the belt and yeah. All right. So on the backside though, you have to do the exact same thing. Okay. Because once again, you want the finished side, I want it facing up or out, whichever, you know, now it's going to be facing up because we're, uh, you know, we're on the top end of the belt already. Okay. Um, so I'm going to come in from the back again. And then I'm just going to loop this sucker over and go right back out the next hole. Now, what I normally do is I'll do six or seven of these holes and just leave big loops here. And then I'll pull all this lace through all those holes and, and tighten it up and everything. But this helps me to keep my lace straight so that I don't accidentally get too much of a twist in it or something crazy like that. So again, I'm going out, coming out of this hole, grain side up, going back in this hole, the next hole, grain side down. And then the exact opposite on the back side. On the back side, it's coming out, grain side up, going back in, grain side down. And this is one of those things, I'm going slow, showing the camera and everything, um, but this can be a very, very quick process. Um, so, all right, so now I'm going to go ahead, I've got quite a few stitches here done. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these tight right quick so you can see what in the hell we're actually doing. And it doesn't just look like a bunch of craziness. So nobody likes craziness. And I am super excited to get to the tooling part of this and everything and see where, how it looks. I mean, I've been really thinking on this belt and what I wanted to do on it and everything. And yeah, I'm pretty excited to see how it turns out. All right, so once I get it pulled tight, I'm, I'm actually going to pull it pretty tight, and then later we're actually going to go back and we'll hammer it down, and that'll really flatten that lace out and make it look nice and finish the, that twisted look. Just like hand sewing, you try to pull it the same amount of tightness, I guess is the word, every single time, so that it's nice and even. So apply the same amount of pressure, I guess you'd say. So there's what we're doing right there. Okay, and it's got that nice twisted look to it as it goes out and in. And uh, yeah, once that's hammered down especially, man, it's gonna look amazing. But I'm going to pause the camera and I'm going to sit here and do this while I jam out to some music and drink coffee. And when I turn the camera back on, we will uh, we'll uh, talk about how to finish it off. And uh, then we'll go back over and ham it out, hammer it out and um, I'm excited. All right. All right. So did about an hour and a half of buck stitching, and I couldn't be happier with how this belt is turning out. 
um, my, uh, uh, I went all the way around it, didn't have to splice it at all. Um, and then here's my ends right here under the, under the, where the fold over is going to be. And again, that's why we started there so that when it ended there, um, we're just going to be able to, uh, we'll contact cement these down and, um, yeah, be done with them. Um, so yeah, but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a, uh, what's commonly called a leather worker's hammer and we're going to hammer down Sorry, I was watching TV. It took me about an hour and a half probably to uh, complete all the buck stitch. So and it's probably hard to see on the camera, but this top row has been hammered down. This bottom row has not, and it does. It lays a much flatter, much nicer, much looks looks more even when I say leather workers hammer um, all you need is a really good smooth face hammer if this had any nicks or anything in it um, or gouges in it um, then it, it would not uh, it, it might mar up your leather some, but you don't want that. Got a good coffee cup. Makes a lot of noise bouncing there. My glue is over there on my cutting table, so I'm going to go grab it right quick. Um, again, on the back too, since I hammered it down, that's nice and smooth, and it's not going to catch and uh, wear as easily as it would. It's not going to wear as easily as it would if uh, I had not um, hammered it down there. Okay, I'm going to cut those off pretty short. Just put a little dab of glue on them, and then in a minute I'll press them down, and they'll be fine. There's, there's uh, nothing trying to pull them off, so they'll be all right like they are right under that fold. So. There we go. All right, we're going to do that, and then uh, I'm going to... Um, finish the belt off. Uh, I'm not going to waste anybody's time with that. I'm just going to trim the liner, do all the edge work and everything, and then I'll have a finished product to put on, put a picture of it on the website uh, with the uh, with the chisels. They'll be up there later this afternoon. So, all right. Hope, uh, hope you learned something. Hope that uh, anybody that might have been curious or even scared of buck stitching, maybe now they're a little bit more comfortable with it. Um, I'm no buck stitching professional by any means, but I do understand how it works. So I thought I'd make this little video and show off the chisels that we had had made. Um, chisels will be available on our website. Uh, they work really well with uh, eighth inch and then five thirty seconds, um, which are the two most popular buck stitch um, uh, sizes. So, all right. Uh, thanks for watching and. Um, I've got another idea for a good video uh, here in the next few days. So have a good day.